In recent years, Vietnam's aviation market has been continuously developed. The flight connection between Vietnam and other countries has also become an important goal. In particular, the airliner's cooperation between Vietnam and the United Kingdom also witnesses a milestone when continuously reaching important agreements between Vietjet Air and Airbus in 2018. Accordingly, Vietjet Air and Airbus officially signed a contract to buy 50 Airbus A321 Neo aircrafts. With this agreement, both countries will gain a lot of benefits. In particular, the UK can earn half a million pounds from the production of aircraft wings in the UK. For Vietjet, this cooperation will support Vietjet's development strategy, help improve the efficiency and scope of its operations, and reach out to the world. At the same time, building an aviation alliance in the Asia-Pacific region, the market with the fastest aviation development in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sharing Vietnam on VTC10 Netflix channel. And today we will have a conversation with Mr. Ian Gibbons about connecting Vietnam aviation and United Kingdom aviation and new steps. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Since 2018, Vietnam and United Kingdom have made a new step in connecting in the aviation field. So can you share more about this? Now, uh, taking it one step back, the United Kingdom has a rich history in the field of aviation. We invented the jet engine, we invented the first supersonic jet, um, and we have a number of world-class companies, including Airbus and Rolls-Royce, that have relationships with all the aircraft uh, suppliers uh, across the world. Um, and the fact that Airbus actually uh, employs thousands of people in the United Kingdom manufacturing high-end uh, wings which go onto the, uh, onto the jets. These are high-class technology skills and that's massively important. So that's a bit of background yes. as to why we are so passionate uh, about aviation. And what we've done over the last few years as a British government here is to support people like Rolls-Royce, people like Airbus in terms of their relationships with Vietnamese carriers, whether that be Vietjet or whether it's Vietnam Airlines enabling them to actually uh, make seriously good discussions uh, around what we can do to further a long-term viable economic partnership between those two companies. Could you share some of your reviews about the Vietnamese aviation market? Yes, well, it's a market that a lot of people are interested in, and rightly so. I think the latest figures show growth of about 17.8% here in Vietnam, which is considerably above the percentage for the region as a whole, which I think is around 7.8%. So growth across the play, across the piece, but Vietnam leads the way as it does in so many sectors now. So there's no, no wonder that so many companies want to forge those long-term relationships with, with your companies here. Um, and I think the fact that you've got such growth in the aviation industry is both a blessing and sometimes it's a challenge because what is needed, and I think this is acknowledged on the Vietnamese side as well, is the need to actually invest in the infrastructure that will allow further growth for Vietnam. And if you look at the major airports, if you look at Tan Song Nhat here, you know, it's one of the busiest airports in the world now. And that route between Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi is possibly, I think, in the top six now. I travel regularly to Hanoi and aircraft is full you know, whether that's the Airbus A321 or whether it is a, as a Boeing Dreamliner. The fact is, there's a lot of passenger traffic between both airports. Long-term decisions for, for the Vietnamese government about how it expands the infrastructure to meet global demand. So in your opinion, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the UK in the process of completing with other countries to sign important contrasts for the production of aircraft components for airline in Vietnam? Well, you won't be surprised if I say I only see advantages, opportunities rather than disadvantages. The United Kingdom is all about winning contracts, but it's based on 
high level experience and a great deal of research about where the best markets are to explore. And there's a reason why we as a government and also British companies have invested so much time in building and nurturing those relationships at a political and bilateral and commercial level because I think it, it takes us to trusted partner status at both a, a, a sort of government level and a commercial level. And for the latter, it's about companies, British companies, understanding what the offer is here. And that's not the British companies saying to the Vietnamese, this is what you need. It's about British companies listening to what the Vietnamese offer, what the Vietnamese need is, and then working collegiately together to ensure that the British company offers the best package and I think that will be based on a track record of world-class excellence in this crucially important sector that a Rolls-Royce or an Airbus or any other British company, whether it's EDM who actually get involved in helping to train the Vietnamese side, say at Vietjet, around uh, safety issues around opening and closing doors, whether it's about training uh, air crew, whether it's about training pilots, that relationship wouldn't work unless it was built on established uh, excellence. And that's where British companies can show uh, that they deliver. They deliver the important technology part uh, of a plane, but they also understand that they need to actually help and work with local partners to improve training across safety issues and the other, any other aspect of the aeroplane. And that's what British companies do, but they don't take it for granted. They actually put a lot of work into nurturing the relationship so that it's not just based on trust, but on world-class delivery. Recently, Connor Burns, Minister of State at the Department of International Trade of the United Kingdom, had a visit to Ho Chi Minh City. During the mission, Mr. Conan Burns had a meeting with the leaders of Ho Chi Minh City People's Committee. He also met and discussed with representatives of many British and Vietnamese businesses, including Vietjet Aviation Joint Stock Company. The UK has advantages in the field of aviation training, including aviation training equipment, training courses for pilots, flight attendants, technicians is also connected with Vietnam. In 2018, Vietjet also signed a contract with EDM Group on providing equipment for training employees on door and cabin operation, with support from the British Ministry of Foreign Trade given to Vietjet Aviation Academy. Qua đánh giá một cách toàn diện trên trên toàn cầu, thì chúng tôi cho rằng là các đối tác của Vương quốc Anh là một trong những đối tác rất là mạnh để mà có thể thực hiện được cái mục tiêu và cái nhiệm vụ mà kỳ xét mong muốn. Thì trong những năm vừa qua, thì một số các công ty của Anh Quốc như là EDM đã thực hiện xong cái hợp đồng hợp tác với kỳ xét để cung ứng một loạt các trang thiết bị huấn luyện cho phi công và tiếp viên. Và trực tiếp là chúng tôi đã ký những hợp đồng rất là quan trọng để cung cấp các thiết bị như là bốc cấp, CET, và các thiết bị khác để phục vụ một từng bước hiện đại hóa học viện hàng không Việt xét uh, tại khu công nghệ cao thành phố Hồ Chí Minh và chúng tôi đã từng bước uh, vận chuyển các thiết bị đó để phục vụ cho uh, công tác huấn luyện của phi công và tiếp viên tại trung tâm và tại các học viện này uh, nhờ có những cái trang thiết bị đó thì cái chất lượng huấn luyện đào tạo cho phi công và tiếp viên ngày càng tốt hơn và đã nâng cấp đã hiện đại hóa một bước đạt được trình độ tiêu chuẩn quốc tế cho trung tâm này. Recently, the Minister of State, Conor Burns, and Consular Representatives have just visited Vietjet Air, an aviation unit to which the UK has signed important agreements. So, uh, how do you evaluate this? Well, I think it, um, what we talk a lot about is about nurturing and building long-term relationships. We talk about it as a bilateral relationship from governments to governments. We also stress to our companies that the importance of building a long-lasting relationship is for regular visits here to build the connection with both government and, and companies. 
And the Minister of State, Connor Burns, his visit last week was a further example about how serious we take that relationship with big um, uh, companies such as uh, Vietjet uh, Airways. And it's not just about helping to push the case for technology uh, and, and broad technology aspects around wing production, but it's almost almost as, uh, as important to have the relationship in terms of building training capacity, whether that's for doors, whether that's for cabin crew, whether that's for pilot. So what you're seeing now is a lot of effort coming in from British companies to help that part of the company grow. And what does the last meeting mean in bilateral cooperation between the two countries? Um, very important. What you won't find from, from the United Kingdom is one meeting a year. You know, basically, ministers have very regular meetings, whether it's here in Vietnam or back in the UK. We're seeing an increasing number of companies coming here to build that relationship, but they're all in it for the long term. And whether that's from a business perspective or a political perspective, you don't have a long term and long lasting relationship unless you invest in it. So Minister Burns was here to co-chair the 11th annual JETCO, which is the Joint Economic Trade uh, Meetings with uh, their Vietnamese counterparts. Uh, last year it was in Manchester in the United Kingdom. This year it was in Halong Bay. And basically that's talking about trade issues that matter, not just for the United Kingdom, but for Vietnam too. And because we have such a strong and good relationship, we can have good, honest discussions across a range of issues around market access, whether that be in agriculture, whether that be in pharmaceuticals, whether it, again it's in, in aviation or you name the sector. Uh, these are important discussions to actually build uh, common interests which we can take forward. Yeah, I mean, it's not just about Vietjet. I mean, we do have a great relationship with Vietnam Airlines uh, as well. Uh, I mean, basically, from a government perspective and a, and, a, and a commercial perspective, it's about where the opportunities are. So, you know, not speaking for British companies, but where there's interest in developing those relationships, that's where you will find British companies coming here regularly to build and then actually hopefully succeed in winning contracts. So it's not just about the major two, it's about actually looking how that particular part of the sector is growing and, and then building the relationship thereafter. Could you share some of the UK's plans in connecting Vietnamese aviation in the nearly future? Uh, I would say probably more of the same. So it's one of the strongest uh, sectors for us. Uh, and um, what we will continue to do will be to articulate the growth in this sector to uh, the government back home, but also importantly the companies. And we will encourage people to come regularly and not just to talk to us, but to build the relationships at a local and regional and national level as this sector grows. I mean, in the aerospace sector, you don't just suddenly come across a contract. Obviously, these are, you know, probably five, ten years in advance. What's really, really important is that Vietnam as a whole understands what the United Kingdom, be that a government perspective or the commercial perspective, needs to understand exactly what we can offer as a partnership and that's the crucial point of, of what we will do now, next week and next year. Well, I think, you're, I think the answer is that that's already happening. It's th and you only have to look at the growth of the sector here and the fact that you have so many new private companies coming in to work alongside of the state-owned um, airlines. The fact is that I think everybody recognises with the growth, the economic growth of Vietnam, the econo you know, and the and the growth in the population generally, if you've got a, a country that's approaching 100 million people, and it's a very mobile uh, population, it's a very young population, they will want to travel. And you have such an amazing country, and you have so many regional airports as well that you've got to have the demand. Um, uh, you've got the demand, but you need to actually have the infrastructure to meet that demand. So, if there's anything, what we would like to do is work alongside the authorities here to help develop the local and uh, regional and national infrastructure. Thank you very much for your sharing. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure and uh, I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you everyone. And thank you for watching. See you next time.